Okay, so officially, welcome to this webinar where um, Dr. Sully Cathcart, uh, my co-founder here at The Curious Piano Teachers, is going to be taking you on a whistle-stop tour of the brand new, just out, ABRSM uh, piano syllabus. So without further ado, Sally, it's over to you. And I'm just going to say to everyone listening on the live call this morning, if you have questions, please pop them into the comments and uh, I will be uh, checking those out and we'll be getting back to Sally with any questions later. Okay, over to you, Sally. Okay, all right. So welcome everybody. And I'm delighted to be uh, presenting this, this, this webinar where I'm going to give you just an overview of the new ABRSM syllabus. Obviously, it only came out on Thursday. So we're all getting to know it and uh, finding out the little treasures and the little gems that are hidden within it. And there are quite a few treasures, treasures and gems, I have to say. And um, as, as Liz um, Liz Gen Geniopoulos, hello Liz, I always have problems with your name, so I'm really sorry if I got that wrong. Um, she and I uh, worked as syllabus consultants with ABRSM, particularly on grades one to three, uh, because there was a feeling that the last syllabus wasn't quite hitting the spot and that something new needed to change. And I think it really has. Um, and I think the, the, the changes are also happening in the higher grades above grade three as well. But I'm particularly delighted, as you'll see, with, uh, with those lower grades. So I'm going to start by just giving you sort of um, an overview. Um, I'm going to take you through sort of the, the, the graded the graded books, um, not all of them, just, just some of them, and tell you about some of the teaching points that you can pull out of them. We're also going to be looking at some of the alternative um, pieces, and I have got a whole pile here. Yeah, we've got a lot of music to get through because there really are some fabulous, fabulous, some of my favorite pieces are in there. So um, I'm just going to share my screen with you to start us off <clears throat> and um, just take you through a few things before I actually get round to the playing. So hopefully everybody can see now that you've got me and it says the Curious Piano Teachers. Okay, Sharon, can you give me a little nod? Yeah, I think everything's sure. fine. I'm just going to um, exit the first. Yeah, I, I can see. Stuff. Actually, I, I've got it on my iPad here as well. So I can see that we're, we're absolutely fine. Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> so the new syllabus you'll have to excuse me if I suddenly go into croak mode because uh, uh, I, I do have a bit of a cough on me still so the new ABRSM piano syllabus um, goes live on the January the 1st 2019 that's the date it can be used from and um, really the the syllabus has been designed to put music and learners at the very heart of the whole experience. And there was a feeling that in the past, this possibly hadn't happened in, in this kind of way. But we know that in order for pupils to continue learning the piano, they have to be motivated by the music that they're playing. So this is what the syllabus is about. It's about getting those learners engaged and it's about giving them music that they really do want to play and they really do want to learn. Not because it's exam music, just because it is really beautiful music. And I think it's probably managed that to a greater or lesser, lesser extent, but I think it's managed it. So let's look at the three different lists. And um, the syllabus uh, director at ABRSM at the moment is uh, a, a lady called Philippa Bunting who is fabulous and she is, has loads and loads of practical experience. She's a string player herself and she knows what learning an instrument involves and she knows the difficulties that we face as instrumental teachers and that parents and pupils face. So she's very realistic. So the three lists are all about three different areas, if you like. And with list A, the aim was to make this the one all about the digits. It's all about your fingers. It's all about getting things working. So you'll notice in list A, you know, a lot of the stuff is from the Baroque or the classical period in particular. Um, and it, it's about technique and it's about having that fundamental technique that we need to have to be able to progress through anything, really. 
So list A is all about the fingers. List B, well, that focuses on being expressive and communicating musically. So these tend to be sort of more, um, uh, tend to be a little slower, not all of them are, but they tend to be uh, slower and uh, things that, that children are really, and adults as well actually, are really going to uh, be able to think about how do, I, how do I put over my feelings here? Yeah, things that they're going to really, really uh, uh, align themselves with and that makes them feel good. So that's list B. So look out for these things as you, as you look through the different lists in the repertoire, because they are quite clear, I think. And list C, which has always been a popular list, list C, and that continues to be the character pieces. So list C is all about the pieces that they are, that are really sparky, that they just go, oh, I want to learn that one. Yeah. But hopefully we've got that also in list A and list B as well this, this time. So those are your three lists. And <clears throat> as I said, it is all about putting that young, younger learner, in particular at grades one to three, it's about putting them at the very heart of the learning process. Now, it's not just about the young learner, because we do know that there are a lot of adults, there are a lot of teenagers that are, that are learning as well. And hopefully, you know, the, the repertoire is getting now so that we can see the right kind of piece for the right kind of pupil that we've got, whatever their age. And I think that is also something that ABRSM are very mindful about looking into the future, because you are just all looking at this new syllabus, the old syllabus, oh, sorry, the next syllabus, which is the one to follow this, is already in the planning stages, okay? So you might be looking at this one, ABRSM are already looking ahead, so. Um, so let's get on and let's start. I'm going to come off here and I'm going to start to look at some of the pieces actually in the syllabus. But I do want you to keep that in mind. Those three different, let me just take you through those again. List A, all about the fingers. List B is being expressive and communicating musically. And list C is about the character pieces. Okay, so I'm going to sh stop sharing which means I'm going to have to put my coffee down because I need to just have one more slurp before I can give you some of the pieces. We're going to start with the list pieces. And we're going to start at the beginning on grade one. <clears throat> and I'm going to give you a quick counter through some of the pieces. And I'm hoping, I've got my special microphone here, so I'm hoping that the sound will be okay from your area, from your end. Um, I can't talk and play because it overloads the system far too much. So I will play little snippets and then I will just talk about them. Um, and if you've got questions about them, then as, as Sharon said, uh, do get and put the um, put them into the into the chat box. Um, just going to spend a bit of time thinking about grades one to three then. And um, I cannot tell you how difficult it is to find the right pieces for grade one list A. It's really, really difficult list to find. It's got to be at the right level, it's got to be accessible, but it's got to be engaging without putting them off. You know, it is, it is a really, really tough job. Um, so that's why I'm delighted that we found three really, really good pieces. And in particular, I want to pull out um, Agincourt's song, which is A3. And this is a 15th century English piece, which has lots of energy, lots of drive, and it's been arranged by Heather Hammond. And I'm just going to play a little bit of it, of, of it to you. There's a tiny little bit at the end. I, I can see kids really, really loving that because that medieval sound is very, very attractive, I think. Um, and it, it has sort of a Dorian kind of modish feel as well, um, certainly a natural minor feel. And then it has a lovely <laughs> tears to Picardy at the end where it goes into the major key. 
So one of the things with grade one is to find pieces that are attractive and appealing and yet are, um, and that pupils are going to want to learn um, that isn't completely out of their comfort zone because that can often happen very easily that the uh, exam boards, and I think it's happened a little bit this time, um, give pieces at grade one that just have too much complex, complex stuff in, whether it's complex rhythms or whether it's complex movements around. Grade one is still quite a lowly grade, even though they actually need to be able to do quite a lot, even just to be able to play that, that simple piece. You know, there is quite a lot of complex stuff going on. So do not underestimate grade one and what is required to play at grade one. Um, here's another one, for example, and this is B2. This is The Echo by um, Ersten, I think you might pronounce his name. Here, here it is. This is Pastoral. It's in 3-4. expect from the title the echo we've got we've got echoes so it's really good for dynamics and reinforcing that that sense of of dynamics really good for keyboard geography because you have to move around i've just realized you can't really see the keyboard let's move you that's much better you have to move around the keyboard yeah you're starting here you're moving up here quite often i like the left hand because it's got some lovely um block chords called one in in second version called five seven called one stuff that kids at this age real or this this levels do need to know adults need to know <clears throat> it's got some complexities rhythmically though because if you were tuning in there you'll realize it's got triplets in it so it's one and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three and a one and a two and a and I can see that that might cause some problems. So you've got to think really carefully about how you're going to teach that. It could be that you mostly teach that through the pupil copying you and counting one and a two and a three and a one and a two. And then after they've done their grade one, I would really suggest you need to go back into triplets and you make sure they actually understand what it is they're doing. And this is, again, a, an area that I think there's a lot of confusion about. Just because a pupil can play something doesn't mean that they understand it. So understanding means they can look at a triplet rhythm and they know how to subdivide that and they can count it and therefore they can play it. So they might even be able to count it and play it like I've just been suggesting, but can they do it in a new situation? That is really the test of their learning and their understanding. So lovely piece, but just be careful of the dangers going on there. Okay, then I'm going to go on with C1, and as I said, the C pieces are all character pieces. So here we've got Happy Day in C1, um, which, you know, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing not to like here. It's swung, it's got blue notes. Um, here we go. very lovely. Um, left hand's not too challenging, it's, it's just extending the positions a little bit, that's really nice, that's something that children, um, stop saying this, that at this level you should be doing. Um, there is one anomaly I think which is in bar four, if you've got the music there, the left hand fingering is a bit strange for me, it goes four, three, two, one. Mm, no, I, I think that should be a four, I think it should be four, three, two, one four lift and move back yeah putting your thumb under there is, is not a good idea at all i think you hear you with this piece you've got to be careful with the last two bars and here i would be a bit messy personally i would take those last two bars completely out of context and i would teach uh the last two bars which go like this And I would make the chords at the very end really familiar to the pupils. And I was doing something similar with the pupil last week in that I wrote the names of the notes onto a piece of paper like this and he had to work out what the, had to find them on the piano. 
Um, and then we played a little game. So he played the chord. It's a nice juicy chord, isn't it? That? Get them to enjoy the sound of it with the correct fingers, of course. And then get the feel of it here, take it off. And then I would count one, two, three, and he would find it again. And he can only put his hands up there when he knows he's going to go there. What you don't want to do is to go. Yeah. You want them to think of the chord as a unit. So the hand takes the fingers to the notes. Something my pupils learn to say, hear from me a lot. Your hand takes the finger to, your, to the notes. Yeah. So it goes in that kind of position. Okay. Um, so we do lots of practice with that. I get him to walk to the door and then come back and play it straight away. So he's got to have it in his head. So the chords get taken away from the context and they learn the chords uh, away from what it looks like. And then they recognize it as what it looks like. And then we reinforce that. So happy day. That's really nice. Um, C2, who said mice? Well, some yeah, I think that's going to be quite a, a, a good one. And then we also have Egyptian level. <clears throat> now, I was delighted because I did this presentation on Friday at Blackwell's Music Shop. And, you know, the composer came along to this. So that was fantastic. Um, Kevin Wooding. It was delightful to meet him. And um, <clears throat> he. this comes from a book called Spooky Time Piano, which I'm sure a lot of you know because it's one of the um, Pauline Hall uh, publications. And here it is, it says Egyptically at the beginning. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it's got a lovely poem at the, at the end of it as well to go with it. Mum is here, mum is there, mum is in their underwear is the first two lines. So I could see lots of um, uh, improvisation going on here. I think, you know, one way to introduce this piece is to use that lovely Egyptian scale and just do some little improv. And lots of imagination going on here, I think, without too much of a problem. Um, use, use the elements that are in the pieces to uh, introduce them in, before the pupils even know, actually, that they're, they're, they're pieces that they might want to learn. Um, it's a really good way of engaging them rather than playing, say, oh, here's the first piece and here's the second piece, you know, which one do you want to learn? Um, to do different things, get a bit messy, get a bit imaginative. That's why we love playing the piano, isn't it? Because we're creative, because we're imaginative. Think about that in your teaching as well. Okay, I must move on because that was, that was grade one. So <clears throat> Egyptian, I've just said, we can travel the world actually throughout this syllabus. Um, we can go to Paris, we can go to the Tyrol, we can go to Germany, we can go to New Orleans, we can go to England. Lots and lots of different places actually that we can go to. Um, if we use our imagination again. So let's go on to grade two. And this starts with the first piece, um, Lesson in C. Now, this is by Diabelli. Here we go. I'll give you a little blast. That's the beginning of it. Um, charm and elegance. Yeah, that's the beginning of their understanding of classical style and, um, you know, how you shape a phrase you've got lovely i mean it's it looks a long piece because it's two pages long how exciting is that but the structure is really really obvious because it's a a b a you know so actually you learn six, 16 bars something like that one thing i think i'm really pleased with with the grades one to three repertoire is the development of musical concepts because at grade one, the rhythms on the whole are straightforward and they are rhythms that the children will already have learned. There are some dotted crotchets and quavers, there are some triplets, but on the whole, there, I don't think there is a single semi-quaver in these books anyhow, which I think is right. Because semi-quavers to me come along at post grade one. 
they have to have that fundamental sense of rhythm and understanding of crotchets, quavers, and how all those interrelate at grade one. So at grade two, it's about deepening their understanding of more complex rhythms such as semiquavers, such as six eight time. And that's what you've got in lesson in C. So it's in two four, and the first bar has three quavers and two semiquavers. And you've got lots of semiquavers coming back in lovely, obvious patterns. We have to teach them the norm of how rhythm appears before we can start to deviate from it, yeah? And this gives them the opportunity to do that. So I think this is a really good piece. I think adults will also love this. And I think it's such a good piece to introduce people to classical style and point out things like, you know, the ornaments, the little graceful um, imperfect cadence, let's say, at the end of the first phrase, and then the perfect cadence at the end of the second phrase. Have a listen. There's that lovely, quiet, imperfect cadence. It's one C5. And there's your perfect cadence, yeah? Perfect. Okay, um, let's move on because the next one is, okay, so this is Giga Longlais and this is English Jig for, by uh, Telemann. So this is in 6-8 and again, as I've already said, 6-8 is a grade two concept. You need to be quite nimble to play this. You've got to have really good keyboard geography. It is one of the more challenging pieces, I would suggest, at, at this grade. But it is based on triads. Um, so if you look at the right hand, for the first you know, bar and a half, it's got chord one, chord four, chord one, and then the left hand also has. And then it kind of has goes a little bit to D major and it has an upbeat lots of little concepts in here that you've got to make sure that your pupils know and can understand as I say it's good for nimble fingers and it's good for keyboard geography sorry modulation. So again, what a great way of teaching modulation through these easy pieces, rather than waiting till, oh, they've got to learn this, and they've got to recognize it at great here, and then, you know, your pathway is, is onwards and upwards, and it's not such a shock and a surprise when it comes to it. Okay, um, now, the next piece, B1. Um, <clears throat> I was going to say, as well as the chic, um, that jig is one of five jigs that appear across the whole syllabus. There are also five waltzes, five fugues, okay? lots of things. Um, next piece, B1, arabesque. Now, I have to say, I think this piece is an absolutely core repertoire piece that uh, everybody should learn as they're going through. Um, I think there are core pieces that people should learn and this is definitely one of them which is why I'm delighted to see it on the repertoire you can teach so much through this piece again it's full of semiquavers it's got triads throughout and and you your left hand is learning those different positions um, it also requires really good um, technical facility and you again your keyboard geography has got to be good so here we go and it's a really exciting piece that kids absolutely adore pupils Absolutely at all. Here we go. I'm just, I'm just hopping in for two seconds, Sally, to say that Charlotte King has just said, yay, that one. Yay, that one. <laughs> yay, it is, it is. Um, <clears throat> as I say, so much you can do there. Um, you've got to take particular care. I'm sure a lot of you have taught this in the past. And, you know, that... 
it can either go disastrously wrong, you know, splat, um, or just be, you know, slightly tentative. Which is not how you want the piece to end. But if you use that technique I was showing you earlier, about the chords and how you find the chords, take the chords away, get them completely familiar with that first, and then do the jump to it, then, um, then that helps lessen it, I think. Um, just a little point before I move on, I mean, I could, I could spend the whole hour on this piece, to be honest, um, about teaching this, the technique of playing. So this little, yeah, it's, it's one movement. It's not da, 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 da. You don't want them to learn that. But you want them to learn then this one down up. And it's it's almost the wrist. Again, it's this idea of the arm takes the fingers to the note, and it's the arm and it's the wrist and the fingers working together as Graham Fitch calls in a blended way. It's a blended movement. Look, my arm takes the fingers to the note. Yeah. So it's that down up, it's like a, a, a little chain of pearls. Digga digga da. Let's try it out yourself. See, work it back yourself a little bit before you go and teach it. I've got to keep going. So, um, C1. <clears throat> yes, June Armstrong. Delighted that two pieces by June are on the syllabus. And this one is Dusty Blue. And this is from her um, piece is called Paintbox. If you're not familiar with June's music, please do go and check it out because it is just utterly delightful. June is a piano teacher just like us and she creates the most wonderful uh, sound worlds and um, uh, soundscapes, if you like. And again, we want our pupils to fall in love with playing the piano. We want them to really engage with the sound. and. In one of the pieces later that I'll play by June, you'll, you'll hear what I mean. Um, because playing the piano isn't just about going fast and furious, is it? This one is Dusty Blue. Of course, it's a 12-bar blues. What a brilliant learning opportunity that is. And again, lots of improvisation you can do for this. Um, teach, them, teach the pupils the pattern of the 12-bar blues. If you're not sure what a 12-bar blues is, then this is a 12-bar blues. So just work out what the chord pattern is in the left hand. super how super 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 is that yeah okay um so now i'm going to move on okay that's that's going to bring my um that one to an end oh there was one other point i don't think there are any dynamics so it's up to your pupil to paint to paint the dynamics onto this you know so use that idea of colors how do they what colors are they going to create okay let's move on grade three now okay Grade three is a total triumph, as far as I'm concerned. A total, utter triumph. It is the jewel of the whole syllabus. Because grade three is crucial. If we don't get them engaged at grade three, that's the point where they drop off. That's what my research shows, that's what everybody knows. If we don't engage them properly at grade three, they will, and don't give them the right music to play, they will get disheartened, they will get fed up, and then they will give up. If you've taken the right approach in the earlier grades, introducing rhythms that they can read step by step, concept by concept, and develop their pitch reading alongside that, then grade three shouldn't be the big reach or the big stretch that it is for too many children. And again, I think in grade three, the syllabus, we've got some real pieces that they're going to love. Um, we've got yet another sort of medieval piece. This one's a bit more of a Renaissance piece. A3 by um, Pretorius. And again, it's got that lovely energetic whee going on. Um, it's two pages long. However, have a listen. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but have a listen to the chords uh, that you can hear underlying the music. Here we go. 
it, this is in 2-2, two -two, so that's quite nice as well. That's a new thing coming up here. Well, I added a little, I added a little um, ornament of my own there that's not there. Um, can you hear? It goes D minor, C major, D minor, A major, D minor, C major, D, A, D. Yeah, and that's it. That's the chord structure for the whole piece. So the next bit, it goes into the left hand. on and now the rhythms become a little more complex because you've got dotted crotchets and quavers and the, 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 there's, there's some finger work going on here so that will take some 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 unknitting yeah and again depending on how you introduce this to this pupil you I would recommend not taking a bar one approach introduce them to the chords again you can do some improvising on those chords before they even know the piece occurs you could introduce the rhythms for example in the B section which is that that we just talked about but uh, 17 dotted quarter quaver four quavers two and three and four and in get them improvising using that rhythm and using the chords. Lots and lots of potential in that piece. Um, okay, the next piece, B1. Now this is by Walter Carroll. And of course, you know, Walter Carroll, much, much loved composer um, over here. Um, still much loved because his music is just very beautiful and very evocative. And in this piece we have got, it's a great piece for developing an expressive thumb because the melody is in the inner part of the thumb so you want that to come out um, it's also good for developing their pedaling to help uh, pupils begin to develop that sense of longer line that they're going to need in the mo more expressive pieces of Schumann or Chopin or people like that. They need to get that sense of line and where that line is going and this will help them to do that. So a, a really really beautiful piece, sensitive pedalling needed, an expressive thumb and then they can really develop their sense of colour and their sense of style and character. Okay, and one more piece from grade three. As I say, it is it is a jewel. I could have picked almost any of them, but I'm just going to look at Blues in the Attic, another blues piece by Nikki Isles, who is always a fab composer. Really quite a funky little piece, this. Um... <laughs> So quite funky there. What do you spot here? This is the more relaxed section in bar 10. Did you spot there was a circle of fifths? Again, what a great opportunity for introducing that idea to pupils. They need to know about circular fifths as they go up, as they learn more scales, all necessary. Okay, so really good one that. Let's move on. So by the time you get to grade four, the music is definitely getting more demanding and more stylistic um, uh, awareness and, and sense of interpretation is needed. However, if you've built on those secure foundations we've been talking about at grades one to three, then it shouldn't be, as I've already said, a big problem. So you've got, for example, the Sonatina by Bender at, um, in A2. And 
This is now, again, it's a longer form. It has a DC Alfino, so really it's nearly three pages. Um, you're, you're developing things like hand crossing, and um, you've also got uh, to, you can also help your pupils to, to explore the structure behind the sonatina. I'm not going to play very much of this, but... Um, So quite fluent keyboard geography required there. These nimble fingers again, these digits really, really coming to the fore. Um, and as I said, you know, there's a bit of there's a bit of hand crossing as well. I always have to work out what I'm doing. Here. So again, different textures beginning to come in now and how you how you sustain that line through there. Again, it's just building on what we've already seen, isn't it, with the, uh, uh, the previous classical music. Um, and then to contrast it, we have B2. We have another Walter Carroll piece, by the way, which again, pupils will really love. The reef, you know, imagine the, uh, the, the waves crashing. <laughs> concertos um, but let's look at B2 now this is by uh, Greed and again this piece I think is is another one that as far as I'm concerned is is a core piece um, there are several pieces like it but this this Arietta by Grieg is particularly beautiful because uh, it has the most expressive beautiful melody line and it, but it has to be really sensitive in the way that it's played. Um, here it is. You've got to have that beautiful expressive melody line and this is the same idea I was talking about with the previous piece that how do you shape how do you get that line really to have a sense of direction you've got a bass line which actually is very straightforward in the minutes and then you've got all these inner lines which have got to be so sensitive in the way that they're done really very delicate very quiet and it's a question of how do you balance your hand so that the weight goes onto the little finger you know the whole alignment of the hand is coming down here towards that little finger and the thumb on these inner fingers hardly hardly playing the keys they're really just glancing over them and the same in the left hand is really there's lots of practice things that you can you can investigate to get that like that but that is really essential and the other thing I'd like to point out is in bar 12 um, you've got this yummy chord okay so you've got uh, <clears throat> you've got an augmented fifth and a diminished fifth all in the same um, chord Ooh, how tense how uncomfortable does that feel and you've got to stay there for a dotted crotchet which after all these semiquavers is quite a long time so getting your pupils comfortable with that sound understanding the tension that's within it and understanding that actually the resolution after it is so much sweeter if you can just sit there for a little bit you know so we're going to go resolution and then... okay I'm gonna stop getting so excited now let's go on to um, C2 and this is Aquella now I don't know whether anybody's come across Aquella but Aquella is a South African um, song dance um, 
street kind of feel. I first came across Aquella when I was in um, South Africa back in 2005 and Michael, my husband and myself, we were in Pretoria and we were visiting a, a field band, as they were called, which is full of young um, musicians, late teens, early 20s, playing the violin, playing lots of classical music in a very uh, uh, fluid, flexible, unique kind of way. And um, we were lucky enough to be invited by then to um, the presidential guest house. And this was to play at a dinner. I wasn't playing, I was just visiting. Um, to play at a dinner for President Mbeki, who was the president at the time. And he was hosting this dinner at this guest house. And um, the, 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 the field band had played in the, more, in the first course. And then they stopped and they had their dinner. And then I think there was speeches and things afterwards, probably something like that. So before the street band played their sort of second set, if you like, after they'd had their dinner, they all picked up their instruments and they started to play quellas, which are these basic, basic forms, really. They just kind of chord one, chord four and chord five, um, kind of funky. And everybody stood up and they all started dancing and Mrs. and Becky stood up and she started grooving as well. So it's great to see that we've got a quella here, quella for Caitlin. careful counting I mean to make it really rhythmically precise is going to take quite a lot of doing there's quite a lot of um, hand uh, I was going to call it unison work it's not always in unison there it is I think but other times it's in it's in six and fifths here and I think that will require uh, quite a bit of hand separate work. I would really, really recommend, I would with most pieces, lots and lots of hand separate work um, before actually putting it hands together. I think sometimes we, um, we actually get pupils to put things hands together far too soon. In fact, I've been working with an adult student who's coming this afternoon and uh, she'd been doing hand separately for a long time. She kept trying to put it together. Said, no, no, no. Don't put it together. Just keep it separately. And now she's put it together. She goes, oh, it's so much easier now, now because I've done so much on it hand separately. Okay, I have to keep going. So let's move on to grade five. And just going to pick out a couple of pieces from grade five, really. Um, I want to pick out, again, there's even more secure stuff is, is really needed, isn't it, at grade five. More secure interpretations. And um, I'm just going to pick out B3, which is by Sibelius. Now, I don't know whether any of you have ever played any music by Sibelius, but um, I think I was introduced to it by Heli Ignatius Fleet on the Piano Teachers course, who is from Finland. So, of course, she's a big Sibelius fan. And this particular piece, B3, I think is delightful. I think it will take quite a bit of understanding in terms of interpretation, and I don't have that yet. But um, it's called The Harp Player. This wasn't a piece, this is completely new to me, this piece. Um, so it starts, well, it has difficulties at the beginning. It's in B flat minor, so obviously five flats. And it starts with the... Um, Tempo marking stretto, which I've never seen before. So that means you start and then you get faster. And you'll probably be able to hear this. Here we go. Starts on a pause, by the way. And here's the harp there. Lovely, lovely. It's very fluid, this piece. It really just floats its way through things. And I just adore the chords. I mean, you know. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're on grade five now. Um, no, I haven't missed grade four. I'm just looking at some, some comments now. I didn't miss grade four. Um, so we are on grade five, but we are moving on from grade five. Um, we're going to do one more grade five piece. And that is, yes, 
C3, which is film noir by Mike Cornick. And um, this is, I think, sort of based film music. And it says at the bottom, Hollywood crime drama from the 1940s or 50s. I think this is a good uh, piece where you can start to explore with your pupils the whole concept of film music. Something they usually have to do at GCSE music, and they need to have an understanding of how film music is possibly different, how it you know needs to accompany a storyline. And um, I think you could bring in all sorts of uh, uh, ideas and, and other concepts to do with film music. You know, they all like to play music from the films, whether it's Star Wars, whether it's Harry Potter. But, you know, look, take some time, make it a little project that you look at film music together if they're learning this piece. Grade five could well be doing GCSE at this particular time. So here we go. With menace, it says. I'm not sure I'm going to get that one. I improvise where I don't quite get the rhythms right there. I just kind of, well, it's something like that. Because that's going on to sight reading. That's what you need to do. Okay, so that is grade five. And of course, that does often um, mean that students reach a watershed at that particular time. But they should be really well set if they're looking at those kind of pieces and the, 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 uh, the progression is really beautifully balanced. Whatever pieces they're learning, by the time they get to at the end of grade five kind of level then grade six should just be a little step up and a celebration of what they can already do and by grade six we really are looking at them as a true pianist I feel um, the, 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 the complexity does go up a level um, I'm going to go straight in to B2 and um, I am very conscious I'm running out of time. So I'm hoping everybody can just stay around for a little bit longer because I'm, you know, I just want this to, to kind of um, evolve. Another core piece, Chopin, B minor, Prelude, beautiful. And lots of lovely things there you've got that beautiful sweeping left hand melody again we're coming back to that idea of sustaining a melody throughout a whole phrase cantabile playing here for Chopin so really good to help them develop that then you've got that sensitivity needed in that right hand and what do you do with those repeated B's <gasps> how many have you got oh you've, 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 you've got 14 of them you know how what do you do with them um, that's all to be explored. You've got some really tricky chords here. Um, bass eight, you know, don't underestimate how tricky these are. And chord legato needed wherever possible. So again, lots and lots of teaching potential in this, lots of things that the students can learn from, from the piece itself. And I'm just gonna do B3. Now, I can remember learning this piece when I was uh, probably at about this same level. And you know how it is with pieces you've learned as a child that they remain kind of forever dear. And I just love this scherzo. Um, you've, got to, you've, you've got to have a, a, a sense of um, the longer form, if you like. Whereas with the Chopin, it's, only, it's two pages long but, uh, and it's very intense. This one has um, four pages. And it has a DC, yeah? So um, it does need to be played at quite a good speed. It's 132, so let me just think. Yeah, it is, it is quite a fast piece, really. Um, close.
and then it has a tricky, tricky bit in the left hand, which I haven't practiced actually, um, in the trio, because it then has a trio and the left hand. Which is fine if you can do the fingering. So fingering is key, absolutely key in that bit. So again, an, another classic piece that's really good for pupils who have kind of that bigger sense of where they're going and how to sustain that. And I'm just going to pull out one of the pieces, therefore, from the C's. I think there are some interesting possibilities to look at. And, you know, remember that we've only had this since Thursday. So, you know, it's, we're all getting to grips with it ourselves. Um, the Ebel which is C2, and I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for eBay on myself, and um, a lovely introduction to French music, which is always light and delicate, and has a certain refinement, you know, that, that we expect from um, French music. So let's just give you Serenade sur l'eau, Serenade on the Water. Let's play this again. lovely and again it's a piece I didn't know at all so um, some some delights there at grade six right we're moving on grade seven here we come so by the time we get to grade seven oh yes we're getting really meaty stuff now. really meaty um, all the a pieces you know again just thinking about the digits yes it's still there that idea of it's all about the fingers let's look at the Mozart a3 Andante, second movement from the Sonata in G, K283. So yes, this is about the digits, it's about um, the, that classical style again, it's about knowing how to build those phrases and um, to seeing that really, really big picture. So it is about building on what's gone before, that Diabelli, the Bender, all the other pieces. Here we go. a little starter yeah it's again it's an extended piece and this is four pages long it is andante so they do need to have a really good sense of where you're going um, you've got to look at the the structure make sure that you analyze both the big phrases and then the micro phrases that make up that big phrase lovely piece very very good piece. um okay one the, there are a couple of interesting pieces, I think, in the Bs. I think um, the Elizabeth piece by Parry. Again, who knew that Parry had written any piano music? Well, I certainly did. And um, I, th I think, you know, again, it's one of the joys of the new syllabus. So this piece is called Elizabeth. And um, these are um, Parry's granddaughter. Elizabeth was Parry's granddaughter, who he described as a little slip of a girl, very springy in her gait. Okay, here we go. Sorry, keep doing that, forgetting to play the second note. got a bit of practice to do on that one now I think. Ah, uh, okay, we will come back to something from list C at grade seven with the alternatives. So just very quickly um, on to grade eight, 
<clears throat> with one piece I'm going to pull out from the from the book itself and that is the very first piece A1 the Saraband and Gigue by Bach and this is from his English Suite number two in A minor now, if you've got anybody who's thinking of doing grade eight, I cannot imagine a more beautiful way of starting an exam than this. A, a, um, a more beautiful and uh, satisfying, grounding way of starting than with this. exam like that would make my heart sing. Okay, so mature and musically assured playing though at grade eight, that's, that's really what it's all about. So that is my very quick trip through and I can see I've gone past 12 o'clock but I am going to keep going and I'm going to take you through, if you can stick with me, or we'll be up on uh, YouTube so you can clock in to this bit if you want it so we're an hour in. Um, because I have got a whole load of music and I won't go through all of them, but I do want to pick out certain ones um, that just give me deep joy. So I'm going to go back to grade one. Um, there is a great, for example, um, in the age, you know, I was talking about A1, really quite hard to find two pieces, both from the same book, actually, both from this Pathways to Artistry, which is uh, edited by Catherine Rollin. And two of my favorite pieces uh, quadrille by Haydn and did you know Haydn has more pieces in the syllabus than anybody else Haydn is definitely top of the syllabus yeah so you've got lovely chirpy rhythm you've got the left hand playing those chords you've got the right hand needing a little bit of keyboard geography nothing too hard going on there but. Um, and then you've got a lovely day by Turk and this one again, very straightforward, a little bit of movement needed, some dynamics. Sorry. Um, so, two pieces from the A's. Um, two piece, well, one piece from, from the B's and that is from Piano Star 3 and that is by Andrew, Andrew Eels. And there's a lovely piece in here. Delighted to see Andrew, Andrew's pieces in here. So, um, Head in the Clouds, really thoughtful, really uh, a good piece to get pupils uh, uh, thinking about being expressive, gives them lots of time. And then you've also got a piece um, from the graded piano player, Close Every Door by um, Andrew Lloyd Webber, arranged by our friend um, Alan Bullard. And you know, I think this piece could appeal really quite a lot to adults. I just want to say and really, really implore absolutely implore everybody to go and look at the alternative repertoire pieces because there are so many great pieces and do you know very very few candidates actually come in and play pieces from the alternative repertoire i think it's one percent now that is shocking to be honest when there is so much else out there that you could you could put in for your pupils that they are just going to love you know the books are a starting point. That's all they are. You can go, somebody asked me on Friday at Blackwell's, can you play three alternative pieces? Yes, you can play anything that is in the current list. So you don't have to have the book at all if that's what you decide not to do with the pupil, okay? So do go and explore these because they really are quite super. As you will see, I'm gonna keep going. Because there is another piece as well um, by Heather Hammond, and this is C4, 
in the scrum, and this is from Cool Piano Sport. Funky, what does he say? Funky pieces for grade one to two. And you see, the other good thing, I'm getting terribly enthusiastic, I know. The other good thing is they're full of other pieces that they can play. Really good pieces that they can feel like pianists, which is what we want. Here we go. <laughs> Good piece. Thank you, Helen. Um, I'm going to move on. And we're going to go on to the bees. Yeah, um, just, just a couple to pull out here. Night Journey, the one by Gurlitt. I don't know which book that's in, but... Um Again, it's another beautiful core piece, really full of character. You can paint all sorts of pictures of, of people riding along on, on, on windy hilltops and things. I'm thinking pole dark here, actually, it being on last night. You know, um, Yeah, very atmospheric, that one. And then you've also got, uh, it's lovely to see Pamela Wedgwood on here, and Lazy Days, which is from Upgrade, Piano 1 to 2, which I'm sure a lot of people will have. going on um, and it is it's two pages so again it's good for the right pupil good for the right pupil over and done with with grade two let's go on to grade three okay I have to take personal responsibility for this next piece because it's there because I've taught it in the past and I know my pupils have loved it and I've been delighted to see several people comment on the fact that that piece is in there. And um, this is from A Dozen A Day Songbook, book two this one is, and this is Broadway movie and pop hits. Now, Dozen A Day Songbook, I can't quite remember when they came out, they're not that old and I found it in Blackwell's 2013. They're super arrangements, really, really super. And this is, Leonard Cohen, Alleluia, and it's a great piece for um, deepening their understanding of 6-8 time, for getting the left hand moving as you'll see, and for using the pedal and getting that sense we talked about earlier of the, the, the extended phrase, how to produce that. Um, have a listen. <laughs> teenager doesn't like playing that I see Sharon's going oh yes I like that one too um, and that left hand you know that's so good for them that, to have that constant thing if you're going to teach that piece then use the chords teach them about the chords that are going on there in that piece it's an absolute gift and uh, you know it's also gone about intervals and stuff like that so just explore the piece for all the different concepts that it has in it because it really is quite a rich piece I think um, I'm just going to keep going a little bit longer and I do want to do a couple more from um, from grade three I told you it's 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 the sort of the crown jewels really and that is facing the crowd by Christopher Norton which is C 
ethics. And again, this is a piece that I've taught for a long, long time, and I know it works. Again, it's a thoughtful, kind of introspective kind of piece. And now another June Armstrong piece, and this is from her series uh, Stars. This is from Stars, and this piece is called Unicorn. Yeah, how nice is that? And um, you'll see what I mean about creating sound worlds because I think she does this brilliantly. Uh, you put the pedal down and you hold it down for four bars, and it just is using all this area of the piano everywhere. I haven't got time to play it all, but you can. I think you can hear it on her website. You can click and listen to them. It says magically. to fall in love with that oh this is just so beautiful yeah and and people are going to love listening to it as well and go oh that's amazing gosh could you teach me how to play that that's what we want and with the leonard cohen as well okay moving on very quickly um grade four just one to mention really from the alternatives I'm not saying there's not more but you know um and that is sleepy town blues by ben crossland and again really good to see that ben has got something on the on the repertoire and this is from his cool beans volume two and again this is a nice blues nice and laid back starts quite Quite straightforward, and then when it gets uh, after the first 12 bars, 10 bars, I think it is, um, it becomes a little more complex. So you've got to make sure that they start it at a speed that they can maintain it at, but that's, that's a really good one to uh, just continue to explore. Um, going on to grade four, I'm just very conscious of the time moving on, I will, <coughs> grade five, sorry, just one to pick out from this, and that is um, the Cool Out, which is um, A6, A6, I love Cool Out, again, classical simplicity, elegance, Very jolly, lovely piece. Um, so that was grade five. I don't think I've got another piece to pull out at grade five. No, I haven't. Um, so grade six, again, just one piece to pull out. I, I changed my mind at grade five, actually. I've got some, I pulled this out yesterday. That's right. Um, grade five, back to grade five. This is B6, and this is a Schumann piece. And Erinnerung, remembrance, okay, and I think this was written in remembrance of Mendelssohn, yes. Yeah, a beautiful, beautiful, thought-provoking piece. Okay, now I'm going to go on to grade six, and um, I've got a couple, if we've got time to do it, grade six, actually. We have got the Bach B-flat major partita makes a couple of appearances, and it is here as A4, um, and I love this piece. <laughs> along and then we get into minuet two super 
super, super stuff, I think, at grade six. And a really good opportunity to explore the articulation and how the articulation actually gives the colour and the dance-like feel to it, you know. So, for example, uh, in the minuet, you've got uh, the... You've got the two lines here with a kind of just the thumb as the accompaniment. So it's knowing how you sustain and bringing out all those little lines. Delightful stuff. Okay. And then Chimarosa, actually. Chimarosa, I just really, really like him. And he's got um, A5. I'm not going to play it, but it, it's quite a good piece, that one. I think I am just about getting to the end. Uh, there's a few more uh, grade six pieces. Oh yes, here's, here's one I wanted to mention and that is the Grovelet, which is on uh, in the L'Allemagne Rose de Marche and this is the Petit Latine de Jesus and this is a really really beautiful piece. This is B4. I adore this piece. You're going to say you do love a lot of music Sally. Yes I do actually, I really do and um, I think we really have to make sure that our pupils know about it. You know, why do you play the piano? Hopefully because you love it. So why not enthuse about it? I, uh... Just listen to that. Yeah. Just, just utterly exquisite. But okay, I could sit and play that forever. Um, and then I've got one or two more, two more, I think. Grade seven, grade seven. And again, this is one that I am particularly pleased to see. And this is C5. And this is a sonatina by Cacciaturio. Now, I run something called the Oxford Piano Group, and um, I have adult players who come along, and I have a octogenarian as part of the group and about five years ago he brought along this Cacciaturian piece and we all went oh wow I've never heard that and I've never heard this piece before and I actually sort of passed it on to ABRSM at the time and nothing happened with it um, and now here it is on the syllabus I can't claim credit for it at all because Possibly somebody else knows it, I think, probably. But I'm just so pleased to see it. And if you're struggling at grade, at grade seven to find something, do have a look at this. It l sounds harder than it is, I promise you. Sorry. this piece on uh, on Friday and I said it's like um, it, well it's a piece that makes everybody smile and I think it's like the big brother of Kabalev's Gifts Clown <laughs> yeah and it's, it's just this I can see I can see students really getting getting stuck into that one so lots of drama going on there you know lots lots of stories you could bring out of it Okay, let's finish. Let's finish with one more piece, this time by a woman composer. We've had a few women composers, definitely more women composers appearing on the on the list these days. And this is by Chaminade. Um, and this is C9. Um, and it is um, scarf dance. Let's give it a go. This is a bit of sight reading, really, but let's see what happens. Go a little bit 
just seen that. But but lovely kind of waltzy type of feel to it, and uh, definitely one that's worth investigating. Okay, so that is literally a whistle stop tour. We promised it you a whistle stop tour, but hopefully it's given you an overview of some of the delights that are there in, in the syllabus this time. As I've said before, I'm particularly delighted with grades one to three, and I think that um, that will motivate uh, quite a lot of students to, to, to choose to learn pieces and to uh, give them a go, but do go and look in those alternative pieces because it, there's loads more in there that are really, really good. Wow, thank you, Sally. And you know what? It's actually, I'm sure that every piano teacher listening to this, or indeed if you're listening to the replay, will agree with me that it is, it's just inspiring to see someone as passionate as Sally about the music and presenting it in this way for us. I mean, whistle stop tour indeed. I mean, we've got through masses, and I mean masses of music <laughs> in the time frame. I know we've gone on a little bit, but actually lots and lots of you have stayed around, so thank you so much for doing that. Um, now, I didn't want to be kind of answering questions as I was going along. I knew there were some, and I think actually one question that I didn't, I just wanted to go through, let's see. Um, was it Gillian had asked something to do with, and I think the answer was Ben Crosland. <laughs> I think it was. So just remind us again, Sally, what the book, um, Ben's book's called. Uh, the book is called um, Cool Beans, Volume 2. Cool beans. I was going to say something else, beans, but yeah, cool beans. Well, I think that's the the one you were you were looking there for. Um, Blues. I also love Sally the way you you have presented this in such an educational way because um, we know that it's it's super easy for teachers to prepare students for exams and where they learn to play music, but don't have this go away with this deep understanding of musical skills and concepts. And that's really, really what I loved you digging into so much there uh, and relating it to the fact that when students get to much more, you know, intermediate and advanced level repertoire, they've got these bases there because we have been teaching them in a very conscious way. We've been aware that these are the musical skills and concepts within this piece. And let's look at another piece. Um, so I really, really, really love that. Um, and I know that you also at some stage had talked about how it was bringing back memories of what you had. And actually uh, we have Gillian, Gillian Graham from Dublin on the call. And I noticed she said the same thing of going, oh, it's bringing back memories of what the music I played as a student. So I'm sure we've all, many of us on, on this call have had the same experience. Oh yes. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to just confirm that I will be getting this up onto our YouTube channel. Everyone who has registered to be on this call today will be getting an email from us a little bit later on today. Um, and in that email, you will be getting um, a link to the replay. Uh, you'll also be getting details about the, um, the discount that we have uh, secured uh, with Manumat. And actually, Sally, can I get you just to quickly type into the chat box just um, if you haven't come across Manumat before, it's www.manumat.co.uk. Um, and the coupon code uh, to get 20% off is CPTP120. Say that again. CPTP120. Again, don't worry if you haven't quite got that. Um, I know Sally's putting it into the chat box right now, but I will be sending that out um, in the email. So if you haven't got it there now, you will get it in a moment. Uh, members will also be getting um, another chance at getting 25% um, discount um, of any orders over 125 pounds on ABRSM books. Um, if you're not yet a member um, of the community of the Curious Piano Teachers, I will also be sending out a link. Um, and if you want to hop in, we don't do this very often, but sometimes on these special webinars, we do this. So if you're not yet a member of the community, I will um, pop in uh, our latest brochure, which will still have live links and you can join today. 
Um, there's so much more I could say, <laughs> so much more from what Sally's been getting us really excited about. But we know that we have actually gone on quite a lot longer than 60 minutes. So I think we will call it a day. Um, but as I say, if you have enjoyed this, uh, this is the sort of stuff that goes on inside uh, the community of the Curious Piano Teachers. And I know we've got lots and lots of members um, with us on the call today. So it's just lovely to have you here as well. Sally, any final thoughts? Well, I was just going to say, you know, we are putting this up on YouTube. It's there for anybody. So if you know of teachers who maybe haven't heard of the Curious Piano Teachers and you think they would benefit from, from listening to this, then please do feel free to share the links because, you know, we're providing hopefully a service that is of, of, of use to you, the piano teacher, uh, wherever you are. And um, we just want to pass it on. We want to pass on the love, really. We want to get those pupils learning those pieces and really really enjoying playing the piano okay so yes, just do don't. share whatever you like lovely have a great rest of the day and uh, we look forward to seeing you on a live webinar again sometime soon thank you so much for joining us today bye, -bye. bye for now